Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you to the panel for being here today. Uh, if I could start with you, Mr. Allison. <clears throat> with the benefit of almost seven years of experience now, we can all identify areas where Dodd-Frank could be improved without compromising the core regulatory framework that has been put in place. One such area for potential improvement is Section 619 of Dodd-Frank that inhibited speculative investments. Former Fed Governor Torillo highlighted this in his departing remarks earlier in April. What do you think of his assessment and what are some of the tweaks that can be made to keep our regulations smart, but also keep our regulators adequately focused on protecting the safety and soundness of the banks and consumers? I think you have to look at a bank at, at a metal level, not at the parts. And <clears throat> regulators, and Rillo in particular, likes to look at the parts, and I think that's a poor way to do it. So if you look at the Canadian banking system, their regulators evaluate the whole organization, and they've had much smaller, lower failure rates than we have. And I think our kind of regulation tends to focus on these little parts and add them together instead of asking the macro question, including the basic philosophy of the bank. Is it a high risk taker or not? Thank you very much. I appreciate that. And related to that, Section 619 requires that five regulatory agencies examine traders' intent to effectuate the rule of prohibitions. Is that inherently difficult for regulators and the banks? I would say probably so. I, I don't think they have the skill set to do it, would be my view. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Barr, if it's okay to uh, ask you a question. Uh, do you think the OCC's failure to address sufficiently Wells Fargo bad sales practices more than a decade ago shows that the agency may have been putting its consumer protection mission in a subordinate role to the, its other mission of improving the profitability of the bank? Well, I, I do think that the, the uh, failure was rather significant, and it was one of the reasons that the, the basic problem of the lack of prudential uh, agencies' attention to consumer issues was one of the main reasons for bringing those authorities together under the new Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. And I think the recent report on Wells Fargo reinforces that it was a good idea to bring those authorities together under the CFPB to give it the power to protect American families and to really have as a core mission and a set of expertise protection of consumers. So I, I think it reinforces the choice made in Dodd-Frank and uh, frankly undermines the choice made in the Choice Act. Right, so you would say in that, with what happened with the, the fake account scandal, that's what the mission of the CFPB sort of it meets its mission in that case. Yeah, I do think you want a consumer agency that can stop the kind of abuses we saw at Wells Fargo and at payday lenders and in other markets where there have been significant problems with taking advantage of consumers repeatedly over time. I think that's one of the core reasons you need the consumer agency to have supervisory power and not take it away as the Choice Act would do. So I think having an agency that has supervisory authority, rule writing authority, and enforcement authority across the market is really important to creating a level playing field for consumers and for banks and non-banks alike. Thank you so much. I yield the balance of my time. 